Today I wanted to talk about social batteries because I think this is something that makes us all different from each other, right? We all have a very different social battery and if you don't know what a social battery is, your social battery is kind of the amount of energy that you have to give to socialising, being social, before you feel drained by it and you kind of need to draw back in, you know? Everyone needs a different amount of solitude and alone time. For some people, seeing, you know, your social calendar for the month being full of things to do, seeing your friends this weekend, seeing your friends this week, going away this weekend, is a dream and it's like they that's all they want. They feel so energised and excited by socialising and seeing their friends all the time. But you know, for some people, seeing a social calendar that packed and busy is their idea of hell. You know, some people crave solitude a lot more and kind of would be happier just seeing a friend here and there and that's all they need. You know, and I think we all do benefit from a level of socialising. You know, if you completely isolate yourself, I think that that makes everyone miserable. However, the level of how much you want to socialise, how long is your social battery, you know, is so different person to person. So I wanted to talk today a bit about social batteries and the importance of actually working out what yours is like and honouring it because I think it's really important. I think it can make you feel very burnt out, very irritable, generally quite unhappy if you're ignoring your kind of limits, do you know what I mean? And you're pushing yourself. And this goes for a lot of things in life. I think learning your own boundaries and your own limits and what levels of things actually make you happy and what's too much. You know, these things are going to be different for everyone in all areas because we are all so different. However, I think how social you kind of are is something that's fairly newly being acknowledged that there's differences. Do you know what I mean? That some of us really don't enjoy being really, really social all the time and that for some people it's not a good thing for them. Do you know what I mean? I don't know. I feel like there's always kind of been this narrative that like if you're invited out to something and you say no and you know you could go, maybe there's no reason you couldn't go, you just don't want to or you don't feel like it, that it's almost like... I don't know, like, you should push yourself to go out, it would be good for you, you know, it would be good for you. And sometimes, yeah, it is good to push yourself to go out if you're someone who is a major homebody, do you know what I mean, who, like, never goes out. Sometimes you do have to, like, make yourself put on a nice outfit and go out and see some people. However, I do think that it's it's new that people are starting to acknowledge that it's, for some people, the best choice to do for them is to say no to some plans, is to stay in, is to make less social engagements in their social calendar. It doesn't necessarily mean there's anything wrong with you, or that you're a loner, or that you isolate yourself all the time, or that you're boring and that you aren't having enough fun. If you don't want to socialise as much. I think that's something a lot of people feel very bad for. You know, people feel really guilty if they don't really have a big social battery, they feel like they have to push themselves and say yes to things more and not do what they actually want to fucking do. Do you know what I mean? Someone may be perfectly happy and very excited by the idea of on a Friday night, you know, ordering a takeaway and staying in with their boyfriend all by themselves and just talking and having a nice relaxing evening or, you know, staying in and working on a hobby or watching a film that they've wanted to watch or like, do you know what I mean? There's like so many different definitions of fun and spending a nice time. I don't know. I just think I'm saying this as someone who has a fairly small social battery. You know, I do like to, I love my solitude. I love, you know, just going out and running errands by myself, grabbing a coffee, listening to my music, working on my podcast. I just think as someone who has always been a little bit more of an introvert, you know, I do genuinely really enjoy my solitude and doing things by myself. And I feel like it's quite often something that people are confused by or don't really get or feel like, you know, they need to push you to go out more. You know, I've firsthand experienced the response that it can kind of get and the way that people can make you feel about it and the way that it can make you feel guilty or like you're doing something wrong or there's something wrong with you. And like, I'm at a place now where like, I don't really feel like that so much. Like there's maybe the odd moment where I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, like I feel a bit awkward saying like, no, I don't really want to do that. I just, just don't fancy it. Do you know what I mean? It's like kind of like, Ugh. like most of the time I'm kind of at a place where I'm like, I have tried the trying to like push myself all the time and it's made me miserable and I kind of hit a point where I'm like, I guess, I guess a point of like acceptance and awareness that there is no right or wrong because to me, I could equally think it's bizarre to look at someone else who does want to go out all the time and be like, oh, fuck. but people are different and it doesn't like affect me. Do you know what I mean? And people, that's the thing is like, there's a lot of personality types that I feel like don't really get the judgment. For example, you know, confident and talkative and extroverted. People never really um, 
critique that so much. Do you know what I mean? If you're someone who, who likes to stay in more, you tend to get the like weird reactions. Or if you're someone who is a bit more quiet, no one, t- like people, do you know what I mean? Like people would be like, you're so quiet. You just don't, like, you get comments about it. No one tells the person that doesn't shut up to shut the fuck up. Do you know what I mean? There's just certain personality types that I feel like tend to not really get the judgment. And I think I wanted to talk about it today because I think actually honoring your genuine like wants and desires and not pushing yourself to want things that you don't and to try and be the type of personality that you're not do you know what I mean I think is really important you know and actually allowing yourself to spend your time and have a lifestyle that that makes you happy and fulfills you and doesn't feel forced or like it's draining you do you know what I mean I think we all go through a period where we maybe don't really know what our boundaries or limits are and don't really know what the fuck our social battery is and we're kind of just experimenting that's the only way to figure it out is see if you enjoy things by trying them do you know what I mean but I think it's so important to actually take note of how things are making you feel so you can kind of take that information and learn with it do you know what I mean I don't know in my opinion I think I think a lot of life is trying to figure out how you can make yourself happy and how you can just curate a life that you like and I think it's very important do you know what I mean I don't think the point of life is to go around trying to make yourself something that you're not and try and make yourself enjoy things that you don't like like you wouldn't do that in a lot of other contexts do you know what I mean like if you tried sport and you tried playing football and you're like I don't really like it you wouldn't keep going every week do you know what I mean you'd be like okay something else is for me and I think a lot of us have a hard time if we're maybe more introverted or have a smaller social battery have a hard time accepting that and just like honoring that in terms of how social you make yourself be you know we have a hard time not just pushing ourselves to do it because there is again like I said this kind of negative narrative about it you know where people think you're rude or like there's something wrong or like I don't know there's just it makes sense why people feel like there's something wrong if they're not really social I don't know I think I kind of hit a point where I realized like it's my job to curate a life that makes me happy it's my job to lay out my schedule and my time in a way that makes me happy and where I'm getting obviously the things done that I need to get done but also like I'm I'm enjoying my life and I'm excited by what I get to do with my life and I'm not looking at my schedule dreading shit because I'm the one who has to deal with that (laughs) you know I'm the one who would have to suffer my way through shit that I didn't want to do if I did that and I think I kind of personally hit a point where I cared more about the enjoyment of my life to myself than how it looks do you know what I mean I care more about how my life feels than how it looks and I think that's kind of the only way you can get past it is hitting that point and sometimes the only way to hit that point is to kind of exhaust yourself doing something that isn't for you or to push yourself to try and be something that you're not and hit a wall and be like okay I can't fucking do this anymore I just have to sit back and like lean into what I actually am do you know what I mean I think that's something that a lot of us in a lot of areas have an issue with and a lot of where I don't know our unhappiness can come from is trying to make things things that they aren't do you know what I mean no and like kind of just swimming like upstream all the time in different areas when it's so much easier if you just work with what you have do you know what I mean but it's not easy like to actually accept who you are and live a life that makes you happy and not give a fuck isn't easy and it's something that people you know we all are kind of spending our lives trying to get to that point and I don't know I think this is an area um where a lot of us don't accept ourselves and we try and push ourselves and I like I said I'm more introverted a lot of my friends are quite introverted you know and I think the amount of conversations that I have that it's like someone trying to push themselves to go to something someone you know saying they've gone to something and they regret it instantly someone saying they've got too much going on and they need to cancel plans it's just like I think I've just noticed that it's actually quite a common thing that people who don't actually like socializing that much and making themselves <laughs> socialize too much. I think this is something that seems quite minor, but I don't know. I think when I am pushing myself to socialize more than I want to for like a while, I really start to feel like shit because I feel too like run off my feet. I feel too busy because I'm someone like thrive when I've got like a cer- like a certain amount of it, right? I need to decompress and I need to have time in because I think for me kind of how it feels is obviously life is already quite busy we all have different things that we need to do and obviously working takes up a lot of our time right so it's or you're already a level of busy that you kind of have to be and I think for me I kind of to me it feels like I I'm run off my feet and I 
don't have enough time in my day to do it all. Like it makes me feel like I kind of need to come up for air. And by come up for air, I mean have time alone. <laughs> like like I recently had um, a really busy few weeks and normally I go to yoga on a Monday in the evening. And that's kind of like something that I, I stand by doing because it keeps me sane. It gives me a little moment to like come off the hamster wheel almost. And like that's kind of something I like have like a commitment to myself that like I have to go to yoga on this day I have to go to this class obviously I can miss it if like something important is happening it's not like I can never miss this class but like if I have no valid reason to not go I make myself go and I love it and it makes me feel really good and it kind of brings me back down to earth and slows everything down again and blah blah, blah. and I have this busy period where I, I hadn't gone for like a month because I was like there was so much going on and I remember I was like right there's no reason I can't go this Monday so I went and I when I tell you I felt so fucking different in myself. Having like some time alone where I'm not seeing anyone, no one needs anything from me, there's nothing I need to go to or no one I need to talk to, my phone is off and in a different room and I am just relaxing and doing something good for myself. I felt like an actual shift into like feeling like myself again and to feeling sane again and this is what I mean by like for me how I feel like myself and how I recharge and how I just feel like base level good is by regularly doing things you know that fill my cup by myself like I need that that's just something that I need and I think whether it is going to yoga or it's driving around running errands getting a coffee by myself or it's working on my podcast or it's going for a run or walking my dog or like even just shit like spending an afternoon like cooking or cleaning out my car, cleaning my room, cleaning my space, shit like that. Like for some reason, cooking and cleaning really soothe me. Like they really just make me feel, I think it's because it's like something physical and I can't multitask with it. Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of people have things like that that they do that just like slow everything down. I love something like that just forces me to do one thing at a time, you know, cooking, clean or like baking, something where it's like, I can't go on my phone. I can't, do I'm busy. And it's like something really simple and relaxing is so good for me. Anyway, <laughs> what are we talking about? I do think it's so important, like I was saying, to actually learn your limits and what feels good for you, like genuinely, like don't be thinking about what you think you should be doing or what you think it looks like or what your friends, you know, feel good doing. Like genuinely having that kind of reality check with yourself about like, is what you're doing now actually making you feel good or could you do something or change your schedule or how you're spending your time to actually meet your own needs do you know what I mean because that's your job this is the thing I've always said this that I think your job as a person obviously we kind of have a few but you're responsible for yourself and making yourself enjoy your life making yourself happy meeting your needs that's no one else's job we're all like responsible for ourselves. and I think this is a way that we need to be looking after ourselves is making sure that we're actually doing what makes us feel good and not ignoring our needs and pushing ourselves to be something that we're not all the time. Because I honestly think it's such, like one of the biggest forms of self-love is to actually put effort into making sure you're enjoying your time in your life. Do you know what I mean? Like, I know it sounds so obvious, but like, it's just like having a schedule that you feel like you're kind of drowning in. Do you know what I mean? That's like, it's just too much for you is is just making you unhappy and you're often doing it to yourself. And I think even just kind of out of the love that you have for yourself, sometimes you need to be more realistic about what's actually working for you. No, getting to know yourself takes time as it does with anyone, like building that relationship and learning what feels good, what doesn't, what's too much, what's not enough. But I think it's so worth the investment of time because I think a lot of the time we are, we're pushing ourselves or we're creating schedules that we feel like, you know, we're drowning in or we're, we're not spending enough time with friends maybe or we're not spending enough time alone. And a lot of the time it's just like a time management issue. Do you know what I mean? Like you, you need to alter your schedule to make it something that you, you feel good in. Why voluntarily spend your time doing something that's not making you happy when you could just lean into what you actually want, you know, and you wouldn't be harming anyone doing that. And, you know, it reminds me of a poem by Mary Oliver called Wild Geese. And there's a line in it about the whole poem is great, but there's a line in it about how life is all about just letting the soft animal inside of you love what it loves. And I think that it's so true because I honestly think half of life is just letting yourself 
want what you want letting yourself actually just embrace who you are and what you want and doing that because that makes you so much more fulfilled so much happier so much nicer of a person to be around when you're not pushing yourself to try and do shit that you don't want to do and like i said it makes me a bitch when i'm doing that because it doesn't feel good and when we're not doing what feels good to us consistently we aren't like our happier self our nicer self our best self we're like worst versions of ourself do you know what i mean and you owe it to yourself to actually do what you want like i think the reason why a lot of us don't let the soft animal love what it loves or want what it wants because we feel guilty like we feel like there's something wrong with doing that like obviously there's some kind of fear in the way of you just fully embracing what it is you want and being more upfront and just doing what the fuck you want it's it's scary and like we all have such a hard time actually just allowing ourselves to want what we want you know and i think that we forget that we're all very different and a lot of life just comes down to preference and what you would rather do there is there is no right or wrong it's not correct to want to see your friends all the time is not correct to want to stay in more the only thing that's correct is doing what the fuck you want to do and letting yourself enjoy what it is that you do there's just no fucking point or benefit in pushing yourself to do something that you wouldn't actually naturally want to do you just feel like you should you know it's often like this people pleaser in us do you know what i mean when we feel we feel like it's rude to things like leaving plans early and i think another one is like not answering your texts is like i think having boundaries with stuff like that i think is important you don't need to say yes to everything answer all your texts go to every plan stay until the end of every plan like things yes they are uncomfortable this is the issue they're uncomfortable and we feel rude and we feel uncomfortable doing them but there's actually not really much harm in my opinion in any of those things it's like people get over it you know, if someone wanted you to stay out but you said oh i'm gonna head home soon there might be a brief moment of disappointment, but they do not give a fuck a lot of the time. And even if they do, this comes back to it's your job to make sure that you're looking after yourself and you're listening to yourself and your needs and you're honouring them. No one else can do that. No one else can tell you when you should go home, how long you should stay out, if you're too tired, if you have work in the morning or if you had other plans early. And You know, no one knows that. And it's not their job to know that because their job is to look after themselves. And if they want to stay out, then that's on them. Or, like, that's their responsibility. But yours is to make sure that you are doing what's best for you is not actually rude and you're not actually doing anything wrong you're looking after yourself and you're honoring what actually feels good to you and i think that's something that it takes practice because it's uncomfortable but it's the only way to fucking enjoy your life and to actually have any like autonomy and control over it as well because if we just are a little bit spineless do you know what i mean and we like we're too people pleasery and we go along with everything your life is no longer your life at that point. You're not the one in the driver's seat. You're just saying yes and going along with everything. I love the quote, I can't remember the quote, but something about if you're always saying yes, your yes doesn't mean anything anymore. It loses its meaning. Because for example, if, if someone actually, you know, decides whether or not they can do something or if they're available, if they want to do it, blah, blah, blah. And they say, yeah, they can go that means something they've chosen to go but if someone says yes to absolutely everything it's kind of like do you mean like do you mean it like if you never say no your yes doesn't mean anything i don't know i just think it's really important to actually let yourself enjoy the little life that you enjoy you know get excited about the things you get excited for it doesn't matter if other people would get excited about them it doesn't matter if someone else would like doing that or if someone else is doing something else and you feel like you're the only one that likes that thing do you know what i mean like if your idea of a perfect night in is like doing a paint by numbers and watching a film or something and like cooking like that's quite sweet and life is quite fucking hard and there's a lot going on and it's very busy and we all have a lot going on and if you can find you know things that you genuinely enjoy that make you happy please don't feel bad about them and not do them because like life is hard enough and i think you know you don't have to live in a life that you don't feel good in you don't have to live in a schedule that you find too much you don't have to see people all the time if you don't want to you don't have to say yes when you want to say no like doing what you want is fucking huge because like i said it's your job it's also like do you really want to spend your life not feeling as good as you could feel because you weren't you know making the choices you wanted to make you didn't spend your time doing the stuff you did want to do to me that seems like one of those things that you would regret do you know what i mean like i think that's kind of something that helped me get to that point and like i said i'm still not perfect with it i still like say yes sometimes when i don't want to or i still sometimes feel uncomfortable and like the little people pleaser comes out in me but she is a lot smaller than she was before i used to not have any control over it but now i'm a lot better with it and i think one of the things that helped me with that is realizing that i don't want to regret 
spending my life doing shit because I felt like I should. I think that's such a waste and I would be so angry with myself if that's how I spent my life. Because yes, it may be, you know, little decisions and little things like, oh, it doesn't make a difference if I go out or don't go out this one night. But if you spend your life kind of in that place, not honoring your limits and your boundaries and doing what actually you want to do and makes you feel good, that's a lot of time wasted and you're not going to feel good ever. I just, I don't know, I think there's a lot of people out there um, that feel guilty for what makes them happy and wanting what they want and doing what they want to do and like their social battery and maybe they're more introverted and maybe you feel awkward or guilty or like there's something wrong with you and I just kind of want to make this episode to say there's nothing wrong with you we're all different and there is just absolutely nothing fucking wrong with if there's other things you enjoy or other things you'd rather do than someone else that does not matter if, you know, everyone's doing one thing and you think you'd rather do something else, that doesn't matter. And also, it's not everyone. I think another thing about being someone who's more of a homebody is you feel like 90% of the world are really social butterflies and out at parties and events and doing everything and you're like the one person who's not interested in doing it and you feel like, what the fuck? Like, and I just also want to say, that's not true. There are so many people that would rather do other things. They just don't fucking post about it and talk about it all the time <laughs> maybe that's the difference is you don't see it in your face all the time you know on social media as well i do think it's important to know that it's not weird or wrong or uncommon i think says i think it could honestly be 50 50 if not since covid a little bit more introverted i think the world is getting kind of introverted now where people love a night in and you know it's tricky to know as well like obviously there are people out there that are really social and genuinely love that and enjoy that but there's a lot of people out there that are doing the really social stuff that don't want to do it and that don't like it the amount of people that i've met or that i've known that just go to things because of fomo or that just go to things because all oh, these people are going and i don't know what else i'll do and oh i'll have to stay in and i don't know how to entertain myself so i just kind of go a lot of people out at these things that you see aren't there because they actually are just loving it and enjoying their life they'd rather be at home <laughs> do you know what i mean this is the thing is like sometimes you feel weird for opting out of certain things but actually you're sometimes just being fucking braver and doing what you want and not giving a shit whereas some people are being spineless and just going to shit because it looks good because they're so caught up in what they feel like they should be doing and, and what people will think i think actually listening to what you want and when you're not interested in something just being like no i'm not interested in that and then when you are yeah i'm interested i'll go to that in my opinion that's a lot better of a trait to have because like i said before if you say yes to everything it starts to mean nothing because it's like do you, what do you even mean anymore you know what is your actual opinion what do you actually like doing just everything like I don't, that's not possible um also i don't know i just i really think that's a great trait to have to actually do what you want like i know it sounds so obvious but a lot of people don't do what they want a lot of people feel too bad to do what they want and they spend their life doing shit they don't want to do so that's kind of why i wanted to make this video to say if you feel bad or like there's something wrong with just doing what the fuck you want there isn't a life is so not that deep do what the fuck you want <laughs> that is this episode it's very important to actually live a life that you like or you will feel like shit and regret it and be very mad at yourself and you also deserve to have a life that makes you happy and that fulfills you like you deserve that and you deserve to give yourself that because you've done nothing to deserve spending your life fucking dragging yourself to and from shit that you don't want to be at what why are you punishing yourself you don't deserve to do that do what you like so that's this episode <laughs> um Thank you for listening. I hope this maybe made someone feel a bit better about themselves. That's the aim. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you next Tuesday.